This meeting is being recorded. Good evening, Ramesh Garu. Uh, I myself, Sai Shwar. Uh, I have been natively from Andhra Pradesh, but currently pursuing my MPhone pharmacognosy from Central University of Punjab. Welcome to SS Podcast. And today our chief guest is G. Ramesh Kumar. Sir has completed his B-Form from Anamacharya College of Pharmacy and uh, currently working as a PV specialist in a reputed company. And today our guest will teach us about regarding the pharmacovigilance, about the opportunities in pharmacovigilance in pharma. Welcome, sir. Welcome to SS Podcast. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Ishwar. It's very pleasurizing to meet you all the time because every time I meet you, I get positive vibes because we were friends for a long time. Yeah, and uh, even uh, when we talk personally, it will give a pleasure for me. And it is, yeah, it is a platform where we are talking professionally yet. Yes. <laughs> yeah, right, right. By the end of the line, we're professionals and we have to talk on this too. Yes, it's very pleasurizing for me and very happy to see you here. Yeah, yes, it's my honor. Too. As you said, like uh, I was completing my master's in pharmacy and pharmacy specialization. Currently, I'm working in a PV department as a yes, PV sir. specialist for the yes. case processing. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, shall we proceed with the PPT, sir? Yes. Okay, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, can you please make me host? Uh, Ishwar, are you in call? Sir, yes, sir. Just a second. Yes. Proceed now, sir. Yeah. Can you please confirm? Is my screen is visible? Sir, yes, sir. It's visible. Yeah, thank you for confirmation. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yep. It is like a PPT where I have to discuss regarding scope and career opportunities for former students for the graduates and postgraduates. Yes. Uh, I want to ask something like, sure, what, what kind of roles you hear for the long time for the pharma students? Most probably. What was the most raised question in your B firm? Uh, whether from your relatives or colleagues or cousins, the people who don't know about pharmacy, what was the question to you? Like after B-Pharma, what you're doing means what they were yeah, asking. Sir, exactly. I had been this situation like I have facing this situation like when I was even doing in the B-Pharmacy or after pharmacy graduation, even I'm doing a my M-Pharm from a reputed institution, people are like pharmacy looking like uh, you just a pharmacist working in a medical store. Yeah, people are like that. Like looking yes. profession as a very in a decreasing manner, very low manner. Yes. Yes, because there is very false assumption. Uh, like uh, if you are doing some B pharma masters, they were thinking that like we can do only medical shop. We can do a job in medical shop, or we were supposed to have a medical shop, or we have to give rent. Uh, we have to give a certificate to rent. It is like a false assumption. I don't know why this is happening today also. Because due to lack of awareness, maybe. Uh, and uh, due to lack of uh, interest in uh, educating the people by pharma students. Because we were supposed to educate the society, right? Until unless we were educating the students, they never come to know like what actually pharma is, what kind of roles this pharma people can do, right? So as per my knowledge, the, the, there is also a defect from the pharma students because if they are much aware regarding the jobs, what they can do, then they can tell to the society, like uh, if we can do these kind of jobs. Because as per my knowledge, we were the people who can actively involve in drug preparation, that drug, uh, entire drug process, like from uh, discovering a new chemical moiety to release of the drug into the market, even after the release of the drug into the market, we can monitor the drug. That is manufacturing, QEA, QC, evolution and uh, evolution tests. And after release of the drug, we can do clinical trials, PCT and uh, NDA, NDA submissions. So much of we do here, but the assumption is just a medical shop. It's a very silly thing. Yes. Coming to the career opportunities for pharma students who are graduates and postgraduates, it will be like this. So after pharmacy, for most of graduates and postgraduates, it will be a big confusion all the time because it was regular routinely known jobs. 
like uh, most of the people will have a choice of masters like if i'm doing b pharm then i can then i can do masters in any specialization like cognacy like uh, statistics and analysis like that so it is one of the options for the pharmacy students and the most away jobs these days are industry jobs like quality assurance quality control formulation scientist r and d scientist and dispensing pharmacists manufacturing medical representatives these kind of jobs are very well aware by most of the students because after completion of the pharmacy whether it through a uh, placement or through the through their own they are going to the industry and performing various roles like a uh, these kind of roles quality assurance quality control like that i think you are also aware of this right be sure yes sir exactly Hello? exactly exactly yeah yes so uh, it is a big confusion all the time like what we have to do after pharmacy yes uh my question to you slightly sure can a pharma student do a software job is it yeah what actually you mean by software job like maybe in normal like java or c or uh, a technical software he can matlab based on the coaching he goes on I exactly guess. so by the knowledge what we gain through pharmacy because we don't have computer science basics we were not supposed to develop a database right because we don't have such subjects such knowledge in the pharmacy yeah. curriculum yeah. Yeah. according yeah. to pharmacy council of india because we were not supposed to develop the database but we were supposed to process the database process in a database am i right we can process and work in a database which was already developed by it is, is it making sense oh uh, yeah 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 sir exactly yeah so coming to this we can work yes a pharma student also can do a software job like it professional weekly five days work and uh, it like a laptop work and i uh, can sit for 8.4 hours per a day and he can do the job so what kind of jobs we can do in a software domain let me show you like yes we can do software jobs too like uh, we have different departments in the software for the clinical domain that is clinical research data management clinical data management saas vigilance along with this we were also having coding that is medical coding medical writing those are also comes in the these jobs if i want to categorize the pharma jobs after pharmacy i will categorize into two types wet lab wet lab dry lab dry lab is that which where we don't work in laboratory where we work on the information what we get for the drug whether it is clinical trial information or pct information uh, next dry lab, wet lab is that where we work in the industry or laboratory there we can do quality control manufacturing production there we have chemical exposure and we have to do in a lab work that i can consider as a wet lab where we work with the laptop uh, in the same clinical domain itself that we consider as dry lab so coming to this clinical research so my question again to you ishwar like uh, after pre formulation studies and so much of quality control test analysis uh, quality assurance and uh, so much of process will happen in the industry right will be the drug released directly into the market after industry work no sir not exactly there is a phase is called there is this clinical trial phase they will goes on with phase 1 phase 2 which should pro right after yeah, thalidomide sure. disaster uh, after yeah, so yeah. many tragedies will happen because yeah. we need to prove safety also because how important the efficacy and the safety also will matters because if a drug is give, uh, curing your fever but it is causing a death to you uh, will it, will it make sense will the risk or benefit ratio is fine for you so you got a uh, fever and you are taking some x drug but you got an adr of death is it fine for you will no, it be safer no sir no sir exactly my thing yeah. is like death cause through medicine may be like unavoidable death causing through yeah. disease may okay. be unavoidable but death causing through medicine is unavoidable na it's unacceptable actually yeah. we can't accept yeah. it yes so after so much of research and after so many disaster after after so many tragedies and after so much of things the fda that who international drug monitoring program what this did is it is implementing such stringent rules and programs to control safety and efficacy so it is very important to determine the safety of the drug as well as efficacy so for this reason we have to prove safety also yeah coming to these jobs clinical research is that yeah yeah i can do that yes clinical research is that as you said after the release of the drug from the industry 
after the release of the drug from the industry who have to perform clinical trial and the pre clinical trial right so during clinical trial uh, there will be so many subjects involved like uh, nearly 10000 subjects so with that all 10000 subjects will get will collect information we'll collect information like uh, we will uh, collect the safety parameters like how the drug is working whether the patient as uh, the subject is experiencing any ideas uh, it will be like that so that all information will be raw and messy format okay so that information we need to that information we need to merge and uh, we need to submit in a formatted way to the fda so this clinical data management and sas will help us in merging the data now i'll del- directly go to the vigilance because it's our main topic today yes pharmacovigilance so coming to the point of pharmacovigilance so during the drug taking whether in clinical trial or post marketing surveillance after along with the uh, efficacy we'll see some side effects too adverse drug reactions which were not intended which were not uh, designed for that because we were taking drug to cure to the, to prevent the disease to treat the disease but it is causing uh, areas to along with the efficacy so we need to monitor on active basis and passive basis the drug effects in a clinical trial as well as the post marketing surveillance by that we can safeguard the subjects and we can contribute the society by protecting the patient health so in this way this pov is very important in making people safer yes pharmacovigilance vigilance is a science of collection monitoring researching assessing and evaluating the information from hcp that is healthcare providers patients on the adverse effects of medicines biological products herbal traditional medicines so vigilance is that in which we will collect monitor after monitoring will research whether the coming adr is from the drug or any other underlying factor and after that will come to assessment that whether this drug is caused this adverse drug reaction or some other factor is causing this adverse drug reaction and we'll come to evaluation that so the particular adverse drug reaction is related to a drug company suspect or it is having some other mechanism of action in the body so finally we'll come to the conclusion uh, after we were receiving an information from healthcare providers as well as patients so this will be on a different medication so this pv is not only limited to chemical medications it is also having its active role in biological products herbals and traditional medicines next i am telling you the uh, will collect monitor research assess and evaluate information that information is nothing but adr information let me tell you what is an adverse drug reaction any unfavorable and unintended sign symptom or disease temporarily associated with the use of the medicinal product because we'll take the drug for an intention to treat the disease but we were getting an effect that is called unintended effect which was not intendedly we have to get with the drug but is it is unfavorable to the body and it is unintended sign symptom or it may be a disease sometimes which will be temporarily associated with the use of medicinal product so this information will collect monitor research assess and evaluate and will find finally come to conclusion whether this drug is having causality that is relationship with the drug or not then we'll submit to fda next the need of pharmacovigilance so pharmacovigilance is not only limited to investigation phase that is clinical trials and not only limited to marketing phase so it is there in both investigational phase and marketing phase because during clinical trial the subject will experience some new adverse events right because for the first time the drug is introduced in the human body after pre clinical trial so when the drug introduced in a human body it will react in a different manner because it's a foreign particle so at the time there will be chance of getting an adr as a result of drug intake so it is very important in an investigation phase as i said the clinical tri- trial up to clinical trial third phase it will be limited only to limited number of subjects that means up to 10000 it may be but when we are uh, releasing the drug into the market it may release and go globally it means to cross and cross of population a drug is reaching then the patient uh, factors will be different body conditions will be different races will be different ethnicity will be different geography will be different based on all these different conditions there will be chance of getting new areas so if you are getting new adverse drug reactions after marketing the drug so we were not supposed to sustain the drug in the market because it will goes as a trend causing a uh, for example we can take covaxin because in the initial phase when we took covaxin 
there are so many deaths were happened due to the covaxin itself and uh, there were so many severe adverse drug reactions like cardiac arrest like that it made uh, so much of panic situations in the public like uh, we don't have to take uh, the because of this false assumption so many patients so many people were not taking the covaxin with that assumption that yeah we may get fever we may get some serious effects if you are taking covaxin like that so if you are uh, creating such impact with your side effects of the drug then definitely it will damage the brand image too for the for the concerned manufacturing industry so this way pharmacovigilance is very important in investigation phase marketing phase and rationally for pv why this pv should exist as i said thalidomide disaster it was a disaster in which up to 4000 limb deformities were happened after a pregnant woman taking uh, thalidomide for the sickness and um, and kind of vomiting and all that during her tri first trimester of pregnancy but the result was very hard very uh, panic after the uh, they giving birth to the children the children were with the limb deformities face deformities and so many kind of deformities were happened so if the pv is working in active manner so they can they might have stopped it only for 10 patients by that remaining 3900 patients 99 patients may get safer from the effect so in this way this pv is very helpful to prevent disasters so as i said uh if i'm taking some drug for the fever and i'm getting good results and next day my brother got the same disease what i do i refer the same drug hey yesterday i took this drug and you take this drug now De definitely you'll get good results so directly or indirectly i'm promoting the brand so if i'm getting some adverse drug reaction with the drug can i uh, refer this drug to my family members or friends definitely i'll tell i don't take the drug it will cause so many side effects and adverse drug reactions so uh, it will damage the customer confidence as well as the brand image too for the concerned company uh, there will be loss of uh, first of all apple phone because of, we don't need check uh, any features like that if you are having a symbol of apple buy uh, directly a, a blind assumption that it will be a good brand then we'll take so if our drug is uh, performing good without any side effect or adverse drug reaction then we'll make ensure compliance and retention of the drug in the market for a longer time and we'll build up the customer confidence as well as we'll build the brand image for the manufacturing company next why pv in ct as i said after preclinical trial it will be for the first time given in the human subjects so when a foreign particle uh, because it's a chemical moiety which is not directly habituated for the body daily habituated for the body so when it enters into the body then a body definitely reacts in such a way and it may produce uh, some areas so there is very important need for the pv in the clinical trial also to monitor the drug adverse drug reactions next why pv in post marketing as i said after release of the drug into the market it may go to the wild worldwide exposure so there will be different factors involved so in this reason there may be chance of getting new adverse drug reactions which were not uh, expected or which were not seen during the clinical trial so in the, for this reason we have to uh, do actively uh, pv in the post marketing phase also because uh, for suppose patients with comorbid illness using concomitant medication patients with chronic exposure also have a factor to get adverse drug reactions comorbid illness is nothing but if i am having diabetes i need to take daily the insulin injection or some other drug because uh because the diabetes is a chronic condition where i need to take daily the drug but after diabetes i got fever some day and i need to take paracetamol too some some antipyretics so if this antipyretics is going and acting on diabetes it creates some new mechanism and there is a chance for areas so concomitant medication as i said i am a diabetic i need to take diabetic medication so if a drug uh, antipyretic is going and reacting with the concomitant anti diabetic then also we have a chance of getting adr it may be not due to drug but it is due to underlying condition so and chronic exposure some people may walk in a chronic environments and all that if you are taking the drug and going to walk in a such a environment then the environmental conditions and the drug inside the body may react and cause some new areas so it is a chance of getting areas in this way there are so many factors involved after the release of drug into the market so in this way the pv is very important to monitor the drug effects next coming to the main point who reports about, about adverse events in clinical trials in pms so investigator is whole and sole responsible for the clinical trial conducting and collecting information on efficacy and safety parameters so if he notices any adverse drug reactions related to the drug he can directly submit it to sponsor the, the person who is uh, 
responsible for taking patents uh, for the particular drug and next during pms the drug information for the safety may be given by consumers physicians healthcare professionals and many other people can be actively involved and can submit on an active or passive basis to the sponsor what the sponsor company will do some sponsor company will have their pv industry in their own uh, company and uh, it is when very difficult to manage all the activities of the drug process and again do the clinical trial and and again do the pct clinical trial and again process this adr processing it is very difficult task and lengthy process for this reason so many of the pharma companies will depend on pv companies we can call crvos clinical research organizations these pv companies chosen by sponsors will work on the patient cases which were submitted by sponsors so on active or passive basis this sponsor company will submit the all the patient adr informations to the pv companies so each patient adr information will be processed as a single case so we when after pharmacy completion if you are entering into the pv department you are supposed to do pv case processing so what pv companies will do pv companies will hire people from the pharma background not only from pharma background it may be from any health healthcare background who had the knowledge of patient as well as drug so the persons who were hired and employed by the pv companies will work on database the mostly used work, uh, working databases or oracle products so most of the uh, the worldwide accepted databases are gis so there are different databases based on the convenience people who are working so this pv employees who are hired by pv companies works for the clients that is sponsors and will process the patient cases and this case processing after completion they will come to an assessment whether coming adverse reaction, reaction is related to the drug or not related to the drug and they will enter all the details patient details and all uh, what is the product dosing regimen what is the medical conditions what is the past history what is the seriousness whether it is serious adverse reaction or it is non serious all this kind of things will be processed by the pv employees call pv specialist drug safety associates data analyst depending on the company convenience they are naming on different roles but the thing is doing the work is the same so they will uh, report the information to the health authority or regulatory authority that regulatory authority will review the each patient case and if it is coming like a trend serious adverse drug reactions then it will give signal uh, and it will develop a signal detection and it will give warnings to the concerned company hey yaar your company is giving so many your company product is giving so many ideas try to do clinical trial once more or you uh, will ban your drug it is like that yes next what we will contribute in pv so as i said after uh, we will have some knowledge in the pharmacy like pharmacology and uh, patient information like clinical pharmacy and if you are not having sufficient or enough information and knowledge you need to take some extra efforts like uh, coachings and like that and you have to gain the pharmacovigilance knowledge terminology clinical trials and all information you have to gain after your graduation or post graduation and by that you need to attend for the interviews which were actively uh, taken by the pv companies so in that you have to after gaining all the pharmacovigilance knowledge they will be checking your knowledge and your performance and they will be hiring you as a pv specialist for the company to do the case processing and to do work on a database you will be appointed as a drug safety you will be appointed as a drug safety associate in a pv company after checking your pharmacovigilance knowledge and you need to process the cases of the patients and on an active basis within the timelines you have to submit the patient cases to regulatory authority next what kind of benefits you expect with this pv jobs good packages so as a fresher on an average you will get 3 to 4 lakhs of package uh, with this pv jobs uh, in a mncs as well as so many companies who have pv companies because ishwar i have a question for you the last question i may ask you for you like uh, do you think this drug stop drug process will stop at a time in future drug process actually in the last my question was the same question i was having sir like there has been automation everywhere uh, artificial intelligence has been a main case now it is in the trend now mm. so is there any chance like artificial intelligence may replace pv in the future mm-hmm. uh, uh, before that i need to address one more question do you think this drug taking process will stop uh, at some time in the future no no actually i won't it think so because medicines can't be yeah. stopped by using people yes so yes adrs has to be taken by time to time after even 
getting onto the post marketing so yes. i guess it won't be stuck yes there is a very false assumption of the it jobs like at a point you will be saturated at a point your package will drop at a point you will be not hiring into the company at a point you will be taking off from the company it is like a very trending question for so many people because in the pv industry if you are not thinking the drug will never go stop because for a smaller fever and nail pain not even a fever if you are getting nail like also you are depending on some other drugs like uh, nsaids so yeah uh, painless so you are taking drug for each and every simple and uh, uh, deviation from the normal body condition if, even the temperature is not 99 if it is 98.99 also you you may think the temperature is going high i need to para, i need to take paracetamol so nowadays the society had become dependent on the drug so i don't think so the drug process will stop until the drug process will stop uh, there is no exhaustion exhaustion for and there is no saturation for the pv industry because once the drug is developing by the pv uh, industry then it should be definitely perform clinical trial and there should be actively uh, monitored for the monitor for the safety parameters like adrs so until drug is there there is a chance of getting adrs because the clinical trial is only limited to number uh, very less count so until there is adr there should be pv there will be pv for case processing as your point uh, for automation so even now we have so much of automation for the pv because everything we do database because earlier it was not like that it will be in a paper format and we will submitting the paper formats to fda even though there is so much of uh, automation we need some knowledge to implement uh, to do the causality like whether this drug is causing this adr or not so for this you need some knowledge and uh, you need some human brain that where it will be uh, assessing the information you will get information from the healthcare providers and different uh, people investigator right so for that information you need to assess based on your pv conventions pv guidelines and pharmacovigilance knowledge pharmacology knowledge patient history by that you are the person you are assessing a patient case completely you are checking cross checking again checking and you will make a conclusion that yes this drug is causing an adr so i don't think so even though there is so much of automation there is not a human uh, there is no human need because there will be definitely human need because with our assessment only after automating the process we will submit the report to fda so my point in my point there is no such a process will come like a complete automation without human use definitely there will be using of human brains for the assessment of cases yes yes, yes. that is to your point yes right. coming to the packages uh, when i'm uh, kindly reviewing and uh, taking feedbacks from many colleagues friends my students and juniors so i came to a conclusion that uh, it is on an average providing 3 to 4 lakhs of package for the pb freshers now next <clears throat> work environment it is same like at not same like it is an it job where you can sit in front of laptop for the 8.5 hours and uh, I, if i want to tell i am telling all the time it is a software job you will be working with a laptop and you will be doing it job but never think that it will be deviation from your regular pharma subjects because whatever you have the knowledge regarding in a pharmacology and the patient parameters that knowledge you are implementing here to process the patient cases i never say it is a deviation from the pharmacy it is a part of pharmacy and as i said in the definition also pharmacology is a branch of science so we were not deviating from our science we are doing our science and we are using our knowledge and we are doing for the cross settings so the work environment will be a like an it work environment where you will be sitting in front of laptop daily for 8.5 hours and you will be working on case processing and you will be submitting on fda next free of chemical exposure as i said it is it is in a laptop work you don't need any chemical exposure because we are not working in an industry or laboratory okay. and you will be all the time working in a oh, man, mnc okay. and uh, there will be weekly five days work uh, there will be no saturday sunday works for the pv companies and good promotion based on performance we can expect good promotions if you are communicating communicating good and your quality is good your production is good then we can expect good performance oriented promotions too and foreign promotion based on your performance will be done so uh, it is a good sign of for benefits of with us pv thank you and this is all about pv if you have any queries you can ask me hello sir can yeah, you please, sure. can you please stop sharing your screen sir sorry can you please stop sharing your screen yeah
सर हेलो सर एम आई विजिबल टू सर ये कैन यू प्लीज यस यू आर ओपन योर कैमरा प्लीज फॉर है uh if you're coming to the hikes as i said the minimum uh, on an average i can't fix this package to a single company because yes. pv uh, worldwide and india wide having so many companies and so many clinical research organizations working on active basis you can see it is a trend because adrs are coming in such a manner this pv also uh, increasing its uh, growth and all that so now on an average i can say for a fresher it it might be 3 to 4 lakhs because it definitely depends on company and you how you perform is very important there so hike is also deviated from person to person so it will be 3 to 4 lakhs uh, for a fresher and you can expect a good hikes in a future too yeah for this i can suggest better to uh, take a review in youtube and uh, different forms because if i'm giving it will be like a bias like i'm i'm just inspiring like a, it will be like manipulating so i can say 3 to 4 lakhs is a fresher uh, salary expectation and it may go for a very higher hikes you can't even imagine so what is the you know in germany and uh, such kind of foreign countries uh, they were they were paying very high because yeah, usa is a country where actually monitoring is going on for every hospital every subject every patient yes sir yeah what is the highest position can we reach in pharmacology section director director, director for a company director. yeah, yeah. Okay. Professor, it has been a very nice session with you. I hope this uh, this class actually helps a lot of students and you today. Uh, yes. It's a general question. What your views? How can we improve our channel? Yes, uh, because uh, what, when I'm thinking and when I'm collecting information and uh, I'm giving demos these days in various pharma colleges, uh, India wide, like I'm taking North India sessions, South India sessions. When I coming, uh, when I'm taking feedback from the students, most of the students were not aware of these jobs. So if you're focusing on the jobs which the students were not aware, uh, then uh, there will be good kind of results we can expect with the uh, with your videos and all that. That I can say. Yeah, sir. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. and uh, our our common question for the podcast is what's your message for youth what's actually okay. your message for them i don't think so youth need any message from my side because they were busy <laughs> in their plans right? okay, okay, yeah for the pharma uh, not all the youth and i can say for the pharma because after technical uh, there's graduation post graduation it is a big confusion all the time i'm sure because they don't even know where they have to put in the steps and it will be like a baby steps after the birth so they they will put a false steps and they will come to deviate from the domain what they working they will work two years in a department and after that they used to migrate so there is uh, such such experience never be utilized right so if you are working for the first two years in a domain yeah. and after shifting to domain how can it will be improve and how can it will be helpful to get uh, high promotions i don't yeah. think so it will be very helpful for you so if you are putting definitely uh, i'm not telling you you to join pb definitely kindly review all the jobs what you are first get awareness like what kind of jobs you can do and follow your passion like what your heart says and if you are okay then then you come in and after coming in you sustain after coming in your knowledge you get knowledge and then you get automatically growth in your future that i can say for you thanks thank you sir it has been a very nice session thank you for your piece of advice thank you Yes thank you sir thank you thank, thank you. you so much namaste bye